You're welcome to the broadcast of Restoration Provision Ministries International, where people are being restored to God's original plan and purpose for their lives. We are a home where God is restoring fathers to their children and children to their fathers, and where God is raising genuine leaders for our generation. It is our prayer that God will open the eyes of your understanding and bring illumination to every area of your life through this world. What's our team for this year? And how many of us are excelling? Okay. Do you know you don't excel until you pass a test? So let's turn our Bibles to Daniel chapter 5. I'm reading verse 10 and 2 12. Okay, I'll read from verse uh, 11. There is a man in your kingdom whom the Spirit of the Holy God and the days of your father light, understanding, and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, were found in him. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father, the king, made him chief of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, soothsayers. Inasmuch as an excellent spirit, knowledge, understanding, interpretation of dreams, solving riddles, and explaining ignorance were found in Daniel, in this Daniel, whom the king named Belteser, now let Daniel be called, and he will give the interpretation of the dream. You know, excellence is not a one-off thing. Is that right? Daniel was excellent in the king's way, like the queen. It, can you imagine the queen is, how long has she been on the throne? For so long. And then Prince, Ch- Prince Charles, or Prince, uh, Charles or Williams takes over and this excellent spirit was still found in Daniel. So excellence is not one off thing. You do today and then you don't do it tomorrow. <laughs> is that right? Okay. So excellence is an output. Excellence is an output. Those of yourself who have done a bit of information systems, we were told that You have input, you have process, and then you have what? Output, right? And when you have a problem with the output, did you attack the output? You will look at the input and the processes that takes place. So for us to develop the spirit of excellence, which is an output, then what we have to be careful about is the input and the processes that takes place on it. Is that right? Okay. So Genesis chapter 22 Verse 12, it says that, And he said, Do not let your hand on the lad, or do, not, or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Daniel chapter 1 and uh, 15, we've, I've asked you to read this scripture so much. that Because there's so much in that scripture, you can have the whole year Bible study just Daniel chapter 1. Is that okay? So as much as we can, let's do a study on it. I'm possibly going to try. Okay. And at the end of the 10 days, these features appeared better and fatter in, in the flesh than all the, the men who ate the portion of the king's delicacy. Because they, the king said they should come and eat from their portion. They said, no, they, we will eat our vegetables because we, want, we don't want to compromise our faith. And when they came out, they came out better. If you look at verse 19, and the the king interviewed them, and among them, all all none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mesara, and Azariah. Therefore, they served before the king. So whenever you operate in the spirit of excellence, there is always an outcome that is, let me put it this way, the spirit of excellence is an outcome after obedience. Is that right? <coughs> the spirit of excellence is an outcome after a video. It's what is left after the transaction. 
See, the accountant will tell me profit. And then that, one, that was the only thing I, I remember. Profit is what is left afterward. Expenses. 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 Okay. But so for you to have any benefit of excellence, it's what is left after a test. So all of us will be tested and will continue to be tested for all the life of Daniel. He was tested continuously. And each time he was found what? Faithful. Can you imagine? He was made the boss over the astrologers, the soothsayers, the magicians, because they found in him the spirit of God and excellence. Excellence makers rule. Your promotion that was going to come through excellence because there will be a time. I remember I used to work somewhere, my boss. Uh, whenever there is, co- there is problem in any client side, you come and say, can we take the day off, go and pray, and you go and uh, solve it, sort it out. And it happens all the time. And I sit there, and all the, all the solutions come. Why? God just dropped a word of wisdom, in, and then that is it. Because I wasn't excellent, I was striving to be excellent. But I was at a particular time, I was excellent in the field I was operating in. Do you know one of the, the most difficult things we can say as Christians is say that, Lord, I don't want this anymore. Do you know what you are telling God? You failed the test. So you are not ready for promotion. Let me see some smile. I repeat. One of the most difficult, one of the, I don't even know the English word to use to describe it. But one of the, the, the one of the, whatever word came into your mind. To say, as a Christian, is to say, Lord, I can't handle this anymore. What should we be saying at this time? Lord, show me how to do this. Because as soon as you say, I can't. I'm tired of this achievement that you've given up, you fail, and you can never be excellent. And do you know what you do? You start pointing figures at everybody else is at fault. The cat is in trouble. The goldfish is in trouble. If you are married, your spouse is in trouble. If you have children, wahala for them. And again, you, get, you start the car, it doesn't start. They, they, everything in your way is in trouble because what? You fail the test to be an excellent person. So how do we measure? Like I just said, you check what you you check what is going into your heart. I explained to you some time back. Your heart is a repository where you deposit things and you, you bring it out as and when it is needed. So a man of excellence always keep his, their heart pure. All of us need to upgrade the content of our heart and mind in order for us to become a person of excellence. There's difference between upgrading and updating. That tells how I work in the field of computers, so I know the difference. Is that right? When you upgrade something, it means that it has a lower <coughs> performance level and then you increase it. Is that okay? To update means there could be an error and then you replace it. That's why the Bible says you should renew your you should renew your mind through the word of God because he wants us to be able to what? replace all the all the things that we have conceived about ourselves which are not in line with God's word. Until we do that, we are not ready to move forward. So today, when we said your morning devotion, you should all, or your evening devotion, whatever time you have it, you should have a journal and have time with God and let God tell you exactly what is wrong, where you need to upgrade. Until we come to that point where we upgrade where we are, we'll never be successful. Can you imagine if you were still... uh, you know, when, 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 when uh, we were learning accounting, the, uh, they used to have a T format, right? Okay, because we were doing computer science, they have something called V format, is it? Okay, so the people who do the T format, they do debit, credit, and then this and that. But when we were doing it, the people who did not upgrade their knowledge, when the computer came, we made all of them redundant because there was no need for them. 
And they say computers is not good. No, all you have to do is upgrade your knowledge to another level. Is that right? So if you don't upgrade yourself, you are never ever going. And many of us, our heart is, the content of our heart has not been upgraded for so long. When was the last time you spoke with your father and he said, you look, sometimes I come here before worship and I can, I can be so heavy and that's, you see me going out, I, I go and sort myself out. Because I don't want to bring my spirit of heaviness here. So any time at all, you stand before you come in here, make sure you sort yourself out. Keep your heart pure, and when we all have a pure heart, we bring the presence of God down. Mark 7, this is when Jesus Christ was teaching a very basic principle, which is the fundamental of everything, where the Jewish believe that to defile your body, it's food and stuff like that who defile your body. But he gave me very deep truth here. He said, verse 15, there is nothing that enters a, man's, a man from outside which can defile him or her. But the things which come out of him or her, those are the things that defile a person. Is that right? Okay, let's see 22. 22. What, what are the things that defile a person? For, for from within, out of the heart of a man or a woman, proceeds evil thought. We were taught that evil thought was not sinful, but sinful. According to the Bible. You think bad thoughts about someone, you've already defiled your body. And what is your body? The temple of the Holy Spirit. So if you defile your body, you, you grieve the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit leaves you. And what happens? You walk in the flesh. What did I say? Ado uh, fil uh, proceed filter to uh, evil thoughts, adultery, fornication, murder, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, uh, of... Uh, uh, an evil eye, blaspheming, pride, foolishness, all these things come from the heart. So the quality of the heart will determine the level, your level of excellence. The quality of our heart, the content of our heart will determine our level of excellence. Show me a man of excellence and I'll show you them there. You show me their heart. And how are the things in our heart evident? It showed outside, right? So for us to be a person of excellence, which is an output, we have to work on the things which is inside of us. Do you know we can be going around the mountain another time, another time, because we have not developed, we have not passed the test to go to the next level? God's promise in, to us, like he said to me some time back, is at a promise, is at a, level, uh, at a higher level, but we can stay at the lower level of the mountain. When you pass the test, you are elevated, and what used to trouble you becomes your full stool. So when we say the enemy is your full stool, you don't just stand there for the enemy to be your full stool. You don't confess. You're you through activities you do. And then when you, God elevates you, the enemy becomes your full stool. This year, we, we are taking territories, but you, I can promise you until you act, you will not achieve what God wants us to achieve. And I don't want anyone including myself, to be left behind. Excellence and output, right? Let's look at one key example. Genesis 25. I'm reading from 25 to 27. So the days were fulfilled for her to give birth. Indeed, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out, it was red, and he was like a hairy garment all over. So they called his name Esau. And afterwards, he, after him, his brother came out, and his, his hand took hold of Esau's heel. So his name was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when he bought them. So the boys grew. And Esau, Esau was, skill, was a skillful hunter, a man of the field. But Jacob was a, a, a mild man. In other words, he was dually intended. In other words, he was a lazy man. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
I said last week that for you to be excellent, you have to be skillful. Is that right? Today we are upgrading. Being skillful alone doesn't make you excellent. Is that right? Esau was skillful, but Jacob was lazy. He was out there, was skillful, out hunting, cooking, yet Esau was in the house lazy about. <coughs> All I want to say is that excellence goes beyond being skillful. Is that right? It goes way beyond being skillful. Why am I saying so? According to the Jewish law, even uh, this thing, the firstborn is entitled to what we call the, uh, the birthright. And then you have a blessing. Birthright does not automatically qualify you for a blessing. Because if you look at the uh, uh, Isaac uh, situation, when he was blessing, Jacob, sorry, when he was blessing his children, the first three misbehaved. He didn't bless them. Is that right? So he's blessing for them. They didn't. Hebrews chapter 12. Okay, 15. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest root of bitterness, bringing out up cause trouble. And this, by this, many become defiled. So root of bitterness can defile you. Is that right? Okay. That's why it is, it, is, it is imperative that we, least there be any fornicators or profane person like Esau, for who for one muscle of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterwards, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected for he found no place of, for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. So Esau, who was Hungry, you know the story. Esau was hungry, came back from the field, he was skillful. His brother was lazy in the house, he cooked something, and he said, Oh, he was so hungry, he was hungry to the point of death. And said, Give me some food. Like his name is, it's a supplanter. He tricked them. He said, Okay, you sell me your best friend. At that particular time, what do you do? You are dying. And what is birthright to me? Like Esau said, give me some food, let me have some energy. Do you know we, do, we, we can say Esau was a fool? But do you know we all do the same thing? When we are faced with compromising situations, we compromise thinking that this particular thing with five minutes, ten minutes, or whatever future you think, what is this to me? You do it. And afterwards, you can, you, with tears and blinking, you've already lost it. And so God saying for him, compromising his position was he was just as profane as people who fornicated. So when we don't take up our position as Christians, God is saying that we are defiled, just like any other person who sins. So not taking up our position is, is just is equally as bad as anything you can think of. So restoration, if we don't take up our position where God has de determined for us, we are already defiled. And he became very bitter. He became very bitter. And why was he bitter? He did not guard his heart. He did not see his position as essential for his progress. He did not see his position. God has placed him as the best place to be. If I trade him a position, God will raise somebody else. You think God is, God is shortage, there's shortage of people in the working it out? No, if we, as soon as I trade my position, God is already preparing a successor. So when, by the time I say Jack, he has raised somebody else. And with what coming, I'll be so bitter. 
This person is doing this. This person is doing this. This person is doing this. And whilst I am bitter, somebody is now having a clear heart and God is elevating him. And what is happening? Uh, him or her. And I am coming down. And that is what happened. When we lose our position in Christ, we go down and God elevates somebody else. Do you know that because he lost his position, we can say God of what? Ab- Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Instead of what? Esau. Restoration in 2020 onwards, never let us lose our position. May he be said, the God of Isaac, <laughs> Abraham, Isaac, and your name. But, this is the good news. But, In Genesis 27, when he realized that he was bitter with his brother, he wanted to kill his brother. His brother has to run away to his uh, uncle because they tricked him. No, no, when people trick you, it's painful. So Jacob, after he came back, went to his father, he, like, the, like Hebrew said it, he cried and cried and cried and cried. And is there no more lesson, a blessing for me? The father said something to him. See, the way you can lose your position, but you cannot lose your blessing. Is that right? People of excellence will still press on irrespective of what has happened. Let's look, look at our past. Let's look at what people have written about us. Let us write a new script from today. And we are going to pray. We are going to anything just like he said. By your sword you shall live, and your, your, uh, you shall serve your brother, and it shall come to pass, when you become restless, that you break his yoke from your neck. 41. So Esau hated Jacob because of the blessings which, with which his father has blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. Do you know what? Jacob did not just steal his position. He stole his blessing too. But the father said something. He said, when you become restless, you break off the yoke. What was the yoke that was upon Esau's neck? What was it? The yoke that was on the neck of Esau was bitterness. As long as we are bitter, we have a yoke upon our lives. Never advancement. We will not get our, our problems. We will never, never, never get our blessing unless when we have a heart of resentment and bitterness. When we allow root of bitterness to be formed in us, we will never get it. Do you know that the, in First John 3, the Bible talks about the fact that bitterness is just as, 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 as equivalent to murder. So he, he said, because he was... Angry with his brother, he said, I was going to kill him when my father died. When, after the money of my father, after the funeral of my father, I'm going to kill my brother for stealing my blessing and my position. Did he freely give away his position? But he was more, more concerned about his, what? his blessing. Okay, First John 3, 15. Uh, just read it quickly. I have five minutes. Is it? Yes, I think I have five minutes. So we're going to pray. He said, whoever hates his brother is a murderer. Do you know what the word hate means? When you say, I hate someone, it's a very strong word, you know. It means that you want the person dead. So I said, I hate that brother. I hate that sister. And semantics, your lips is saying, I dislike them, but in your heart you hate them. But God does not judge by what always comes by for our lips, though. He is look at your heart as well. Even though out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, but sometimes we can twist what is coming from our heart. So hatred is equivalent to what? Murder. So even though Esau hadn't physically killed his brother, Because of his hatred, he has actually killed him in his heart. But did Esau 
repent. Yes. When? When you lose your position, you lose your blessing, there is a condition, he said, when you have become restless, how many of us are tired of our situation? How many of us have become restless of going around the mountain? If you are like me, you want to break off that well, yoke of your neck today. And how do you do that? Now, Jacob lifted up his eyes. Now, Esau, Jacob, flee because his brother wanted to kill him. He went to his uncle. The uncle also tricked him. They had a family of tricksters. And then after a while, he decided to go back to his father's house. So on his way to his father's house, he met his brother. When he met his brother, uh, his brother heard that he was coming. But he was, because he, do you know the Bible says, Proverbs 28, verse 1, it says that evil one starts running when no one is chasing them. So Esau was still running away when, uh, 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 Jacob was still running away from Esau when Jacob hasn't even done anything. So when he, before they met him, he said, you, let me divide my people into battalions. First battalion go. When you are dead, the second battalion will go. Maybe by the time you get to the third one or seventh, you would have forgiven me. But do you know what has happened? His brother had already forgiven him. Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and there Esau was coming with him 400 men. Wow! Those days you judge somebody's worth by his army. He has a whole army. 400 men. How many did Abraham use to go and uh, uh, rescue Lot? 300 plus. I've forgotten the number. Three hundred. And J Jacob himself was coming with 70. The one who stole the blessing was had 70. The one who broke off the yoke of his neck had 400 men with him. I don't know how many will be at home. Hmm? It's like myself going somewhere and we have Mr. Mr. D and Mr. Kofi coming along. We have more men here. Is that right? Why? He became, he, when he saw his brother, what did he do? Where am I? And, but Esau ran to meet him he, he, until he came near to his brother. No, sorry, wait. Then he crossed over before them, bowed himself to the ground seven times. You can imagine? He sent the first battle on the bears. He, he, he forgot about them. He ran to meet his brother. But Esau ran to meet him, embraced him, fell on his neck, and kissed him. They wept. What happened? He has forgiven his brother. Today, when you are here, you still have that yoke of bitterness in you. You can never advance. How many of us want our, our blessing to come upon us? We have to lift up that yoke. We want to, this year, walk in excellence. And how are we going to do that? We break off the yoke of somebody on our back. Do you know he made more than his grandfather, Abraham, than his father, Isaac, than his brother, because he broke off the neck? The yoke of his neck. Today, we're going to break off the yoke of our neck. I'm, I can say more, but we can just end it here. Thank you for watching. We trust you have been blessed by the message. If you have any question or need clarification as a result of the message, please email info at rpmint.org. For our meeting times and places, please visit our website www.rpmint.org for further details.